Good morning, everybody, um, or afternoon. It is afternoon for some of you. Um, it's also evening for some of you, like my wonderful artist I am going to be interviewing today. The wonderful Imran Ahmed from Pakistan is going to be joining me. Thanks, buddy. Um, so make your way into the chat room. I'm super excited. I am a little bit nervous. I don't really know why because he's so freaking talented that it's like, what do I talk to him about? Because he's so beyond talented. I just, I don't even know what to say to him. I feel like I'm going to be like blah, 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 the whole time. So wish me luck because for some weird reason, I'm super nervous. <laughs> And I don't get nervous because I do this all the time. But if you guys have watched his videos, he is so talented. So it's like, what do you talk to somebody about that's beyond talented? And I just feel like I'm scatterbrained for words this morning. So wish me luck. And while we wait for Imran to join us, then we will wait for everyone to come in the chat. Because I usually try to start about 10 minutes early just in case we um, just in case we have a hard time getting connected and especially you know in another country I don't know I mean I don't think it's gonna be any different but um, but yeah super excited Jamie Collie good morning Dwayne Piper good morning Nikki Monique hello Big, huge fan of Imran. Um, James Marler, good morning from the Dod Don Woods Band. Amazing drummer. Um, I think, yeah. So I think I got everybody's good morning to those that are joining us. Now, if you are brand new to Miss Rebecca's Musician Palooza, welcome, welcome. It's going to be a very exciting hour I do believe that Imran is going to be playing live for us, so we can hope. I think he said he would, and I know Phyllis will be very sad if he doesn't, because I know Phyllis is a big fan of his music. So, yes, Nikki, share away. The only thing is, though, you guys, if you are not part of the group, you are not able to... Um, you will not be able to comment if you are not part of the group. And sadly, since I'm live, I cannot really add people to the group. Hey, Hunter Lot, what's up, buddy? If you guys are in the chat room, please make sure you share those hearts because I know this is going to be an amazing interview and not on my end. I know it's going to be amazing because I'm interviewing an amazing musician that we have all heard. And are very excited to talk with Vic Picks. What's up, buddy? Daryl Tuttle. Welcome, you guys. We are just patiently waiting for Imran to join us. For those that don't know who Imran is, you are missing out. <laughs> he, is, he is so talented. I've been watching a lot of his videos of him playing, and it's like, how do they do that? How do they make those fingers work like that? It is so amazing to me. Hunter Lott, how are you? It's so good to see you in here. Brett Collett, welcome to Miss Rebecca's Musician Palooza. Oh, 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 okay, Imran. I'm so excited. I feel like a giddy little teenager here. <laughs> But he is going to be joining us any second. Oh. Ah! <laughs> Hello. There he is. The man of the hour. I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Mr. Rebecca. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you too. You look fantastic. Thank you so much. It's such lovely Yay. having <laughs> it's it's really I'm, I'm really super excited. I have no words to say. Seriously. I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm so excited as well. I've been looking forward to this day. And right. we have a lot to discuss in the next yeah. hour. 
This one is for you. Oh. Wait a second. Palooza. Thank you so much for giving me the honor. I'm truly, truly excited and so honored to be on your show. You are awesome. Seriously, you're Thank so awesome. You. Thank you. I just love doing what I do. I love supporting you artists and I will continue to do so until I just can't. <laughs> you, so, will. you will. Thank well. you. And, and you, you are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for supporting us, all the indie artists around the world. That is truly an honor for all of us. Well, you are so welcome. I love it. I love what I do. And you guys are amazing. You guys are so worth the time <laughs> and effort that I put into these interviews. So thank you, thank you for what you do as well, because you are fantastic. Oh, hello, Hunter. Okay. Hi, Nikki. All the guys are here. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Right? There are some amazing people out there, that's for sure. So, Imran, tell us, tell us exactly who you are and where you are from. Okay, right. Uh, I'm from a country called Pakistan. It's very far away from the United States. And uh, my journey has been very, very difficult one, complicated, strange. Everything is like all mixed up. Uh, I'm going to start off like when I was a teenager. When I, when I was about uh, 12, 13 or 14 years, I really got fascinated by rock music. And before that, when I was very young, like I was 10 or 11 years old, I used to listen to all this late 70s and early 80s music, mostly the disco movement and all this. So one day at school, one of my very closest friends, his cousin, he came from Australia and he handed me a tape. And that cassette, it, back then we used to have cassettes. There was no CD player, no MP3, nothing. I, I'm like an old school. I, I belong to an old school. So uh, that the year uh, probably was uh, 1984 or 85. He handed me a tape and I took that tape and I went home and I had a small boom box, you know, a very small uh, stereo. And I just played the tape and it had some rock music in it. And at that time, I had no idea what rock music was and what these loud and heavy guitars are. I was totally clueless. The only thing which I was fascinated was with the loud guitars and the guitar solos and the riffs and all this thing. So, so yeah, since I, uh, I live in Pakistan, Back then, we never had any exposure of uh, Western music the way it is now. We had no MTV, we had no uh, rock channels, we had no headbangers balls, nothing. So it was very, very difficult for me to figure out what rock music really was. And uh, it took me like about three, four years to even understand what the rock music was. Coming from a very, uh, different background, you can say. But fortunately, I really started to listen to this and the people I was with around, I, uh, there were few of my friends I met who were really into this uh, rock and heavy stuff. So we started to exchange mm -hmm. tapes, like we became a small tape trading kind of group, you know. So, uh, we, uh, we formed a very, uh, a small group of three or four people and we used to listen to music. And I thought that the only thing which fascinated me were guitars. I used to listen to singers. I used to listen to uh, the melody, the lyrics, the songs, everything. But guitar was something which really, really fascinated me for some reason. I thought that this is something I want to do, but I had no clue how and why. So we had one mutual friend who had a cheap acoustic guitar. And uh, I, whenever I used to go to his place, it would hang on his wall and he, he was becoming a doctor. 
so he was so busy he never had the time to even pick that guitar and it was lying uh, in the dust it was biting the dust and uh, he never used to play that much probably occasionally he would uh, pick up the guitar i asked him that if it was okay if i can uh, borrow his guitar for some time since i was just a teenager i was broke i had no money we were like free spirit you know nothing uh-huh. <laughs> just yeah we were just free spirits so uh-huh. i asked him <laughs> i asked him that if if it was okay if i can borrow his guitar he said no you cannot even touch this if you want to play you can just take it here sit in my room and play i said okay man i'm going to steal your guitar one day don't worry about that so mm-hmm. uh after a couple of months i used to visit his place uh, once a while and i would pick up his guitar and play and the interesting part was that it had only five strings in that and i had no idea that guitar had yeah i had no idea that guitar has six strings nobody ever told me that uh-huh. guitar has six strings so that that was really something fascinating for me just holding that cheap guitar was so cool for me i thought that this is something i was like a child in a toy shop you know i was so mesmerized by the instrument and one day i really begged him i said you just give me this guitar for a couple of days i can take it home and i just need to figure out how it goes what it is so he kind of like reluctantly agreed he said okay you can take the guitar go home and uh, i br- brought the guitar at home and i started to uh, explore it i had no clue how to play i was just like strumming with that guitar like probably uh, just doing some strumming and all this and the first string of the guitar was missing so i thought that this the uh, the keys it had the guitar had six keys on the headstock and the first one uh, was i thought it was just an extra peg or an extra key and that was about oh. it <laughs> but i i continued to uh, make sheer turbulence out of the instrument i was like making really weird no- noises out, out of the instrument because i had no idea what i was doing nobody ever taught me and one day wow. <laughs> one day i Go went <laughs> thank you one day i went uh, with my friend to a shop nearby shop where i used to live so it was a bookstore basically and at the corner of the bookstore there were some magazines lying and when i saw the magazine there were like guys with long hair and holding guitars and i was immediately yes i'm going to buy this magazine there's something about it i picked up the magazine and lo and behold it was a guitar magazine and i was like oh wow that is so cool i found it i thought i finally found it and uh, i uh, when i asked the price it was very expensive for me since i was just a kid i had no money back then so my friend and i we chipped in the money and finally we bought that uh, guitar magazine i brought that guitar to me and i completely devoured you know i just totally went i was mesmerized i locked myself my mom was so angry at me she said you have to study first forget all the music and everything i said okay mom i'm going to study so that's okay i'm going to explore this thing and i'm going to learn this thing and then that's how it all started i started to learn how to play first initially i learned some few chords and then i started to learn some uh, riffs and then i moved on and on and the rest is history wow so how did you, how would you say you actually realized that that's really something you wanted to do with be a musician very very good question very good question when i was listening to rock music i was alienated in my own country because at that time and even today there's a lot of indian music dominated in my part of the country so people are really into commercial uh, music they are into indian bollywood music they are really into uh, the music in their own language 
so since pakistan is not a uh, an english speaking country so it was very very difficult for me to really prove myself that i am a musician and i listen i love american and british rock music that was right. from the bottom of my heart i i knew that i was a misfit i was an outcast i was a loner in my own country with my own people mm -hmm. because nobody would appreciate that rock music there were certain people very small group of people who were really into this and we were like very close friends back then and we used to uh, hang out with each other exchange music exchange magazines and would come over to a place and we would jam in really small places and stuff like that but mm -hmm. uh, i wanted to prove myself i thought that yes i'm going to prove this world that everything can happen as long as you believe in yourself and i had right. oh, thank you and i was like i was totally committed to this thing since i felt very alienated among the people i was living i thought i'm going to do something with music and guitar was the answer guitar was the thing yeah. which i really wanted to do i wasn't really good at sports i wasn't really good at academics the only thing i wanted to do i thought that i'm going to be a guitar player one day whether i'm going to get a break internationally or not so it all started we had like we were a bunch of four guys there was a keyboard player and uh, there was a singer and i was on the guitar and there was a bass player we had no drummer back then because drums were again another story like having a drum set and playing it was too difficult for us at that time to have or even to afford the drum set so my keyboard player he would play some uh, loops the drum loops from his keyboard so we would try to manage oh. like this <laughs> yeah he would play the drums That's on cool. the keyboard yeah uh -huh. and we we started to have like local gigs in uh, different places in different universities in different colleges and different places uh i was almost like in my uh, early 20s back then and unfortunately there was more rejection than appreciation because people would not relate to people like they never wanted to listen to deep purple they never wanted to listen to pearl jam they never wanted to listen to led zeppelin they never wanted to listen to all these american and western band they were more like into a local music and local stuff so being a musician i think i had the most rejection from my part of the world which is quite unfortunate and it's a blessing in disguise as well i thought that if i'm not going to be anything in my country i'm going to prove myself internationally a time will come when i'll get an international recognition <laughs> and i think thanks to people like yourself and many other guys who are really supportive of me and my music and uh, then i started to uh, really work my way towards english songs i thought that the only way to become successful is to have your original music frankly i was very very bad at cover songs i I never had the patience to sit down and work note for note and uh, play cover music. The only thing I had in my mind was that I'm going to write my original music and then I'm going to release it and at that time I think that was 97 or 98 there was no internet in Pakistan there was no facebook no youtube nothing we had wow. we are like yeah we are like we were 200 years back from the west and other countries the only thing we would rely on were the magazines and through word of mouth that was the only thing we were relying on so uh, i started writing english songs and my band members were kind of like a little reluctant they thought that writing english songs is not going to take us anywhere he said that if you want to do something if you want to break internationally uh, nationally locally then you have to write the songs in your own language in my own language in my own native language and i was totally against the idea 
probably I was more like a, a non-conformist since day one. I thought that I'm going to work and I'm going to write English music and that's the only way I'm going to mark, make, my, make a mark in the international market. That's the only way I'm going to do it. So those guys, they, we like, uh, we did some gigs and the singer, he wasn't very comfortable in singing English songs. He always used to tell me that I would uh, sing in my own language and I would always oppose this idea. And eventually that band broke. We split up. Then uh, by the year 2000, I was totally on my own. I said, it really doesn't matter if somebody is going to help me out or not. I'm going to do it. I'll be persistent in this thing. I'm not going to give up that easily. I'm, I'm just like, I thought that, yes, there was something uh, in the back of my mind. I thought that, yes, I'm going to prove some, someday that you can be accepted. And as long as you believe in yourself, it all happens. Correct. Uh, yes. Thank you. So, uh, and we're so proud of you. <laughs> thank you so much. So uh, in uh, 2004, yeah, in 2004, since I, I'm living in this country, there are different uh, genres of music uh, I can, like I'm exposed to usually. There's Eastern classical music. Now, Eastern classical music is <clears throat> pretty dark music. It has a very dark feel to it. The scale, I can just give you an example, for example, can you hear my guitars? Uh -huh. okay. This is a kind of Eastern classical scale. It has like Arabic feel to it, almost an Arabic feel. So that is something I learned subconsciously because there's, there's a lot of Eastern classical music here. And uh, you, even if you don't want to, you reluctantly listen to it on the radio, on the television and everywhere is there. So I kind of like learned some scales, some Eastern classical scale. And I thought that I'm going to incorporate these classical Eastern classical scale into rock music. So probably that will be something new, something fresh and something different. So right. I, thank you so much. I, I found a band by the name of Garaj, meaning thunder. In, in my language, the word is Garaj and in English, it means thunder. So that was my first professional band. And uh, I formed this band with a guy. He was a, an East, a Eastern classically trained singer. He was really too good as a singer. He would sing his scales and he would shred from his uh, singing. He was so good. So we formed this band. And in 2005, I was invited to perform at the prestigious Royal Albert Hall in London in front of 5,000 people. That was my major, major break. And I was like, oh my God, this is so <laughs> awesome. Because just performing at Royal Albert Hall in London is it's a huge honor, huge. I was live on CNN, I was live on BBC, I was live on so many channels in London back in 2004, uh, five, sorry. <clears throat> that concert basically was a charity show. So, <clears throat> In 2005, there was earthquake in Pakistan, in the northern side of Pakistan, in the northern area, there was an earthquake. And uh, we were told to perform there and we raised about uh, 55,000 pounds in one night. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, like a huge amount of the money went to the earthquake victims. It, it, it was a charity concert. So being, uh, like performing there at Royal Albert Hall and uh, it was just like amazing. It was amazing. 
we came back to Pakistan after the performance and uh, I wasn't really quite happy with the whole thing. There was something missing deep inside of my heart. I thought, yes, we were like on print media. We were on uh, local television in our own country. I was on BBC. I was on CNN. I was on many channels all over the world. But I wasn't really satisfied with what I was doing. So I started to think that something is really missing. And I knew the answer. The answer was rock music. That was the main thing which was missing from my life. I thought, awesome. <laughs> I thought, why not listen to my heart? Why not listen to what my heart is saying? And why not listen to myself rather than going for fame or going for anything? Like, I'm not denying fame is a very good thing. Who doesn't want to be a famous? But if you're not doing what is not really into you, what doesn't come from your heart, I think it doesn't really mean anything. It has to be from your heart. Even if you're playing one single note, it has to be from your heart. So that's, that's very important that whatever you do, it has to come from your heart. So I knew that yeah. I'm going to be a rock musician and I'm going to do music in English language, no matter how many obstacles I have to face, no matter how many rejections I'm going to face, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to do it and I will. So in 2000 and uh, yeah, with the same band, sorry, a little, I'll go back a little. With the same band, I went to US. In 2009, I had a uh, complete tour in US. We toured about for two months. I performed in Chicago. I performed in Los Angeles. I performed in Boston. I performed in uh, Denver, Colorado. I performed in various places of the United States. I came back in 2011 and I disbanded my previous band. I called it quits. I said, I'm going to quit this band and that's it. The other two members, they were really, really surprised. They said that since we are getting break, you want to quit the band? I said, yeah. I, I said that for me, playing my own music is more important than anything. Fame is really not that important at this moment for me. For me, the music is more important. It's all about music, nothing else. So they were right. really, <laughs> thank you. So they were really, really uh, like, they were furious, they were angry. They really, they thought that I, I've gone crazy. I don't know what happened to me. Like they, they were really, really against the whole idea of me quitting the band. I quit the band and then I locked myself for about one year and start, I started writing songs in English and I started composing my own music. I said the original music is the key to my success and this is what everyone is known for. You have your own identity. People know you through your music. It's okay to play cover songs. It's okay to play cover band, being, a, being in a cover band, but your original music is what sets you apart from everything. Then I started. Then I started writing my own original music, and uh, in 2011, I met a very good friend of mine, Melvin Clements. He was a Pakistani guy. He was from my own country, but he was a phenomenal singer. He, I had by that time, I had my own home studio, and one day through a mutual friend, he visited me at my studio and he wanted to record his own song. And the moment I heard his singing, I thought I'm going to steal this guy. He is so good. The next thing I knew, <laughs> I offered him, I said that, do you want to join a band? And he was uh, like too happy and he said, why not? He said, I know you so well, you're pretty famous in my own country. And if you want me to join your band, I'll be honored. I said, I'll be honored because you're such a phenomenal singer. He joined me and we started working on an album. We did about eight or nine songs in purely English language. He was a great singer. He had a versatile voice. He would sing from rock to ballad to soft pop uh, to pop rock, everything in between. He was like too good. 
So we started to perform local gigs. We would perform at different universities, at colleges, at clubs, at other places. Unfortunately, uh, the singer Melvin, he wasn't feeling well. He started to like miss the jammings. He would never show up on jamming. He would never come to the uh, rehearsals and he would never come to the recording sessions and all this. So I was pretty worried. I asked him if he's all right or everything is okay. Then he revealed to me, he said that I have to tell you something which I never told you. He was suffering from a disease called pastoanemia. It's, it's a rare disease where your, white, your, where your body stops producing white cells. So your, your, uh, like, uh, your immune system becomes very weak and you're prone to all kinds of diseases and it's, it's very, very bad. It's a very rare disease. Wow. So I was pretty shocked to hear the whole thing and uh, I started to pray for him. I said, it's okay. You just take some rest and whenever you feel okay, you can come and you can join me whenever you're okay. But unfortunately, his health got aggravated. He got worse and worse with the passage of time. And by 2016, he was admitted to the hospital and he never made it. He passed away in 2016. He oh, died. In wow. Yeah, I was, I was very, very devastated and I was like, oh my God, it seemed like it was the end of the world because you rarely find good people and you rarely find talented people in your life. And right. then I was, I was so devastated that I wanted, at one point I thought I'm going to quit the music. But thanks to my wife, Shaista, she's been very, very supportive of me. She said, no, you have to carry on the legacy of Project X. The band was Project X, which I formed with Melvin. So she said that you have to carry on the legacy. If you really believe in yourself and if you really want to do something for Melvin, he'll be happy up in the heaven. And you're going to do it. You're not going to quit like this. And thanks to my wife, her words of encouragement, it really motivated me. I was so motivated. I thought, yes, yes. She's so right. I'm going to carry on the legacy and I'm going to continue with my music. So awesome. <laughs> thank you. So in, <laughs> in uh, uh, I think it was March. Yeah. In March, 2016, I recorded a song crazy. The song was already there crazy. And I had my Facebook page. I made a Facebook page and I uploaded the song. Uh, crazy on my Facebook page and uh, after two months I received an email from an independent uh, uh, music award show aka the Josie Music Awards that I was nominated for this <laughs> and I was like oh my god is it really happening I was totally like I didn't believe this what is happening? I, I was shivering. Literally, I was shivering. I had goosebumps. Even I, I'm, I'm having goosebumps right now, even to think of that time. And I hugged my wife and I said, look, just because of your advice, I kept doing it and look what I got. And I was so happy. And that was my very first major break in the United States at, in 2016 at the Josie Music Award. I was nominated for two categories, uh, Song of the Year and Artist of the Year. And that was really a dream come true. So that was the first time I walked on the red carpet at the GMA in 2016 with my wife. I didn't get to win though, but I was really, really happy. I said, no problem, winning is not everything. Then in 2017, again, I was nominated as the World Musician of the Year. And unfortunately, I didn't make it, but I won the uh, World Musician of the Year. I was the winner in 2017 JC Music Award. Yay! That, <laughs> you. So that was the turning point of my life. And I said, God is great. And if you work hard, if you believe in yourself, things do happen. 
And then I believe that everything happens for a reason. Then there was no turning back. Then I was again nominated in 2018 for the same music award, the Juicy Music Award. I went to uh, the Dollywood uh, and I attended the red carpet event. I came back. And in 2019, there's another, uh, another independent award show, ISSA, International Single Songwriter Association. It's uh, founded by Tammany Dill. She's a great person though. I was nominated for that award and not only me, by that time, my wife, she was managing me. She was my promoter and she was nominated as well. So we went to uh, Georgia, Atlanta and I won <laughs> the uh, male rising star and my wife won the international promoter of the year. And Miss Rebecca, I tell you, if you believe in yourself, things do happen. And one thing I learned in my life is that never quit. Just keep doing it. You never know what's in the store. And then everything start to uh, fall into place. And uh, I started to collaborate with so many awesome artists on the Facebook. And there, there have been so many collaborations since then. I've collaborated with the band Three Days in the Grave, uh, Greg Whitestop, Gene Couple, Robert Taylor. Uh, I did about six, five or six songs with the whole band. And then I collaborated with, there's another extraordinary musician, uh, Ricky Davis, he, who's a mutual friend. He is an amazing guy. And uh, then the collaboration thing started to go on and on. And another good thing which happened in my life, which I'll, I'm really thankful to is that I met a very good friend of mine who's my brother, Don Balch. He's from Nashville, Tennessee, and he has his own production company by the name of DND Productions. And this person, I'll tell you, he knows more than anyone I've ever met. He, he's in past, he was associated with Guns N' Roses, with Warren, Poison, Motley Crue, all these great bands of the 80s of whom I grew up, I listened to. And we talk a lot on the telephone or uh, through Messenger, through WhatsApp and other uh, social media. And we are always in touch and he really gives me great advice on how to go about how to do music, what to do, what not to do. We exchange so many things with each other. So the journey has been very interesting. It has been a long journey and I'm really looking forward to work with some really awesome artists. Recently, uh, there's a very good friend of mine from Canada, Amanda Ford. She and I, we are, we are working on a couple of songs and uh, she is an amazing singer songwriter. And uh, we have been, uh, we have done our first collaboration of uh, uh, the cover of the police song, Every Breath You Take. And yes. we are getting a lot of good feedback, a positive feedback of the song. And hopefully we'll be doing some originals as well. So this is, in a nutshell, this is my story, my journey. Yeah, it's so amazing. Thank you. So amazing. Thank you. Uh, I have learned one thing in life that uh, there are many people who come to you who might seem your friend, but they are not. Some will be mm -hmm. very close to you. Some might leave you uh, in the middle of nowhere. And there are some very loyal friends who will be there for you forever. They are the friends for life. So I'm really lucky to have some of these people who are always very supportive of me. They are always there for me and they really help me. And I try to do the same for them. The, Entire relationship is very unconditional. The love is unconditional. Everything is unconditional. So we tend to really uh, feed each other off. We give positive vibes to each other. The world is already going through a lot of negativity 
there are a lot of negative people. So frankly, I, I don't have any time for this negativity. I really want to, at least when I die, people will remember me for my music rather than thinking that I'm some kind of a stupid or some uh, egotist, a self-centered egotist person. That I never wanted to happen. I hope so. I try my best. Well, we love you. And there are so many people in the chat room right now that are saying the most amazing things about you right now. So, so I love them all. They are you amazing. are so loved. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And yes. uh, uh, I would like to play something uh, if you give me the permission. <laughs> of course, we want you to play. We want you to play a lot. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Okay. Let me see. There's a track. Uh, I'll just play it quickly. <clears throat> He's amazing. <laughs> This is a kind of fusion thing I'm doing. you still close what's up with that <laughs> yeah <laughs> don balch and i we as i told you earlier that we talk almost every day on the phone and we are always in touch when i went to uh, us in 2019 i stayed at don's place in nashville and we had a rocking time and i'm going to tell don that one day, Don is going to make me meet Slash from Guns N' Roses. He promised me that because he's a very good friend of Slash from Guns N' Roses. And I said, man, you, I'm going to meet Slash. And because I grew up listening to Guns N' Roses and I grew up listening right. to all these great bands of 80s uh, and 90s as well. So, yeah, we, we've been really close uh, all the time and we talk a lot. And as I mentioned earlier about Amanda, she is another person who's like uh, among the group in this group and she's really a fun person to be and a, and a phenomenal singer. So I'm working on some really cool stuff with her as well. Awesome. 
And she's in the <laughs> chat room right now. So hello, hello, Amanda. Hey, Amanda, hello. <laughs> okay, uh, I want to play something else as well, if you uh, give me the permission. Oh, yes. Do we have the time? Oh, you know what? We have all the time in the world for you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Just let me do a little bit of setting. This is just a small thing I, I will play. This is an Eastern classical scale I was playing. So I kind of like incorporated in the rock style. So the accent of this scale is Eastern, but it's incorporated with the rock uh, style of playing. So that's why it sounds really different and uh, so uh, unique. That, that's the whole thing. Right, it is very unique. I like it. Thank you. For example, another thing. So Don says, play sweet home, let your redneck live. <laughs> I have to uh, let me see. Just wait a second. I'll see if I can have this song. Okay. That was funny. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. 
I think that's enough for the redneck. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. And no, Don. Don says I taught him well. <laughs> yeah, he taught me a lot of things. Okay. He taught me how to be a <laughs> He taught me how to that's be a That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That's awesome. <laughs> Cool. Very cool. Okay, Imran, we need to give a shout out to a couple people really quick. Yeah. So, so. Phil, you know, you know Phyllis. Phyllis oh, Salter yeah. again. Yeah, ma'am Phyllis, I know so well. She, I think I had a photograph with her taken at the 2018 Juicy Music Award. I still have this. A huge shout out to ma'am Phyllis. She, she's amazing. She's yeah. Really awesome. And, uh, yes. and also Nikki Monique. She's another very good friend, friend of mine and we did two songs. We did Haunting Me and uh, uh, Life. We did two songs, two original songs. She, she's really a great singer and a very good friend of mine. We, we've been like she friends. She is a sweetheart. Yeah, she, she's amazing. We've been friends for like uh, six, five, six years now. And uh, awesome. yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, I never get to meet her in person. I hope I will. Probably, if I come to US this year, I I'm going to meet. There are a few people I really like to meet. Right. And, uh, How exciting! Yeah. You know, uh, traveling is another thing which really teaches you a lot. I think I recommend everyone to travel a lot. When you travel, you learn a lot. No book can teach you what traveling can teach you. And especially 
They're like when you go to a different part of the world, there's a different culture, there's a, there are different people, a different language. Everything is so unique and so different. And I think we are special and unique in our own ways, each and every one of us. So that's what makes us interesting as a human. Or else we would get really bored with each other for like very easily. So like when I was at Don's place in 2019, uh, my whole family was there. So I learned a lot of things from Don. I learned how the American culture actually is, the way Americans live, because he's truly, uh, really a redneck. And he does things his own way. Then my wife, Shaista, she's a very good cook. She cooked Pakistani food there. And Don was like, oh my God, this is so delicious. I've never had anything like that. <laughs> so... Hi. <laughs> it, it's like a, a cultural exchange kind of thing, you know. So in the cultural diversity, it's, it's really, really, it's really amazing, you know, it's fascinating. And it what makes each other interesting. It what makes us special. The different culture, the different language. Yet, when it comes to music, we are all the same. Music really unites us. It, it's such a passionate thing. It really doesn't matter. If you're living in United States, I'm living here in Pakistan, or maybe somebody is somewhere else. Like for example, this song, uh, Sweet Home Alabama, the cover I did of Leonard Skinner. The most amazing part of this song is that I did the music and the singer, Anne, Anne Reddy, she's from Russia. She sang that song in English language. So you can imagine a redneck song is being done by someone whose native language is not even English. <laughs> this is really crazy, you know. It was supposed to be done by some American band, but somebody who's non-American, non-native English speaker, they are doing Sweet Home Alabama, the ultimate redneck song. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, this is this is the power of music, I believe. This is how the music unites you. People really don't understand this thing. They they ask me that how come you get along so well with foreigners, with so many people all around the world? I said we speak the same language and that language is music. Because as right. my yeah, as my friend Don says that music knows no boundaries, and that's very mm -hmm. true. It doesn't matter. Yeah which part of the world you're living, which language you speak, when the musicians unite, they speak in one language and that is music. Because a note is a note. See, if I'm playing, if I'm playing a note, the whole world will understand this language, no matter what part of the world I belong to. So basically music is such a powerful thing. And the, uh, entire credit goes to people like yourself who are really, you know, trying to gel us, trying to uh, connect us from all over the world. And uh, blessings to the technology, thanks to the technology that through this uh, awesome internet and through this technology, we are really connected to one another and we are really appreciating yeah. each other. And I think hats off to you for putting on such a great show. Amazing. I, I've, be, I've become a super fan of yours. Thank you. Thank you're, you. You're I just love it. I love what I do. <laughs> you are amazing. So. Thank you. Well, you're amazing too. And you have the biggest fan base of people that love you. It's Thank so you fun so. to watch everybody's comments in the chat room. So. Thank you so much. Super awesome. You know, uh, the the thing you're doing is it's it's really phenomenal. Like I have many friends who are really supporting independent artists. Michael Tobin, uh, who does this show, The Lookout Guy. Phil Kranz, he's he's uh, doing the Black Dog Show. There are so many steepers, and then I have a friend, Linda Erico. She's from Los Angeles. So there are many people who are really doing wonderful job and they are really supporting the independent artists all over the world. This is really commendable. Hats off to you, Miss Rebecca, for doing such a great job. Thank you.
Thank you. And I'm like I said, I'm going to continue doing this until I cannot anymore, which is probably going to be when I'm in the ground because <laughs> I do not I do not plan on going anywhere. So we well, just need to keep supporting each other and supporting each other's music. So. Exactly. That's, you know, uh, the team leader always supports his whole team, the entire team. There's a difference between a team and a boss. A boss is always bossing around, but the leader, the team leader, he cares for each and every one and he looks after. So you're like more like a uh, part of the team. You're a team leader. So you are really connecting all the people all over the world, which is, which is phenomenal. Thank you. Well, I have a blast doing it. So as long as you are, just keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. So, but yes, music does live through people. You're right, Don. It really does. It does. It really and does. Uh, I would like to thank uh, another friend of mine, uh, Broniger McDaniel. She's a jazz artist. She's from Nashville. I did a complete album with her. And the album is available on Spotify and it's called Daydreaming. And when I went to Nashville at Dawn's place, I met Broniger as well. And I met her at the ISSA awards as well. And she, by the way, she won the award also. And she was the judge last year as well. And this year she'll be performing uh, hopefully in the award show as well. So we did a whole album. Uh, it was more like an EP of about uh, six song EP. And it's available on Spotify, on YouTube, everywhere. And if you want to uh, listen to my music, it's available on all the platforms around uh, the world. It's on Apple Music, on Spotify, on YouTube, on Facebook, everywhere, uh, SoundCloud, Reverb Nation, everywhere, you name it. Wow. <clears throat> How exciting. Okay, Imran, would you mind telling us a little bit um, about your family? Because you have a beautiful wife. I know you have a beautiful daughter that's gotten a big award lately for... Tell, exactly. tell us about your, tell us a little bit about your family. I'd love to hear about your family. Okay. My, both of my, I have two children. I have one son, he's 16 and my daughter, she's 13. And both are extremely talented. My wife, Shaista, she's extremely talented. She is basically a fashion designer. She is a promoter as well. And she has her own page, her Facebook page, Shaista's, by the name of Shaista's. So she like she has a clothing line uh, basically going uh, online. So I, I'll give you the link. You check out. She has some amazing amazing clothes there. And uh, my son, he has his own YouTube channel uh, by the name of Baby Tech X. So that is basically about gaming. He's more into gaming, you know, uh, all these gaming consoles, and he's like playing the games online, and he's doing all the gaming stuff. My daughter, she is more into education. She has her own YouTube channel, Study Mission. Study Mission is uh, a formation of two words, study and animation. So she combined those two words and she made it Study Mission. Uh, and she's only, 13, yeah, she's only 13 years old. And she has been like putting all the uh, educational work on her YouTube channel. And uh, she'll be celebrating book week in April, uh, the coming month. And she has interviewed all the authors around the world, uh, from US, from Canada, from Ireland, from everywhere. And she has like interviewed so many awesome people. And- uh, Hi. And uh, recently, <laughs> She won the award, ISSA award, uh, the honorary award through International Singer Songwriter Association. And she's the official spokesperson of D&D Productions as well as ISSA as well. So wow. she, she really <laughs> That is amazing. That is so, wow. What an awesome family you have. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, that is very cool. Okay, now Imran, I guess Phyllis told you that she what she wanted you to do during this interview. Now, do you know what that is? 
<laughs> the, uh, putting the guitar on my neck, some strick. <laughs> Actually, you know, I'm I'm tied up with this cord, this uh, headphones. So oh, probably, okay. Uh, I won't be able to even play properly, and this this cord is very short. So uh, I can like make a video of myself and I can upload it, uh, but I yeah. can't play it. This right. If, if yes, we okay. were lucky to do that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll sure. definitely do that. Yeah. And, and I would like to uh -huh. mention one, I would like to mention one more name, uh, Georgia Paris. She is really, really an awesome singer, songwriter. I've collaborated with her as well on one of the songs. And uh, I'll be working uh, on an ongoing collaboration with her as well. Uh, <clears throat> she's from uh, New Hampshire, Boston, I believe. And uh, she is really, really an amazing singer. And I'm really uh, like looking forward to work with her as well. So there are so many people. I'm really sorry if I miss out on someone because uh, I just, whatever I can recall, I just uh, give a shout out. To right, yeah. right. Well, Imran, you are amazing. I, I am so honored I got to talk to you. <laughs> It, it is That's I, been the uh, highlight of my my year. <laughs> as soon as I found out about you, <laughs> right? Uh, it, it is I that is honored. You know, I'm I'm really really so honored to be on your show, and I always used to like go through your shows and I would see different uh, artists and they are all absolutely talented, phenomenal people. Yeah. Great, great artist. You, you are doing a wonderful job. Seriously, hats off to you. Thank you, thank you. It's my pleasure. I just, I just love supporting you guys so much, and I hope to interview some of the artists that you are talking about, like Amanda and Ricky, and definitely, so definitely. I hope to get in touch with they, them. They will be awesome on your show, and Don as well. I think you should. You better call Don. He is such a sweetheart. And such a hilarious, the best sense of humor. I learned a lot of things from him. And by the way, hopefully we, we are planning to start our own show by the name of uh, Dandy and the Redneck. I will be the Dandy oh. and he will be the Redneck. So we are planning to... <laughs> <laughs> we, we are planning oh, to... <laughs> my. Oh, my. Yeah, Don seems a little crazy. He just yeah. said, then let him stay at your house. <laughs> he, you know we have we have these private jokes and people don't understand this and he called he calls me you you're a terrorist i said yeah i am a terrorist i'm gonna kill you with my guitar <laughs> <laughs> so we are all oh, man, Don, we need to do an interview i can tell yeah, i can I tell know. Yeah, but Don Don Balch is crazy. He, he's he's my brother. I love him to death. That's awesome. How exciting. Imran, you are amazing. And I am gonna follow you wherever you go. And if you're ever in the States, I'll probably even make a trip where you are and come and see you. So I would love, I would love to give you a big hug. Seriously. Yes, you're, you're... I would love to give you a big hug too. Such an amazing Yay. person. Such an amazing person. Yes, I, and we will. Yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying each and every moment of this interview. Seriously. I never get to talk Me this too. much. <laughs> you I'll know, put just... filters on. <laughs> <laughs> what is Don saying? I'm so, <laughs> I'm so excited to interview him now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you better do it. And you'll be laughing all the time. You know, he, when I was at his place, I, I cracked open. He was so awesome and he was cracking so many jokes. And the moment we call and I'm laughing all the time. And my wife, she says, are you crazy? You're laughing all the time, you don't talk. <laughs> it's, it's really hilarious. He's, he's a crazy man. He's a crazy redneck. <laughs> Oh, Phyllis says Emron gives the best hugs. Aww. Oh, I'm a you. hugger too, so that's that's so awesome. Thank you, thank you, man, Phyllis. You're you're amazing. You're awesome. 
Oh. So, yeah, by the way, another thing I would like to mention before we close this, I have formed my own band by the name of Encounter. And the band members, half of the members are from Nashville, Tennessee. Basically, they are from Tennessee. And one guy, he's from Los Angeles. And I'm from Pakistan. And I'm really not sure how this band is going to work because we are on different planets. Uh, mm -hmm. The singer, David Pollard, he is in Tennessee and the drummer, Chad Sheepley, he's also from Tennessee. And uh, Greg Whitestock, he's from Los Angeles and I'm here in Pakistan. So we are living in different parts of the world and I don't know how it's gonna work, but somehow it's gonna work. And the best part is that we've already done four songs and we are working on another four songs. The moment they are ready, the album is going to be out. And this band is gonna rock. Encounter is gonna rock for sure, I'm telling you. It will be something really different. So how long has Encounter been around? How long have you been a band? Uh, only three months, less than three months. Yeah. Oh wow, okay, I knew they were quite new, so. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, definitely I'll, I'll be sharing a lot of uh, stuff in the coming days. Oh, how exciting. And we will watch for it and we will share it. And we just love you and we're so excited to follow you in your career. Thank you so much for giving the opportunity and the honor. I'm truly honored. Oh, you are so welcome. Thank you so much, Imran. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the time. And thank you for giving me the opportunity. Your show sure rocks. And Miss Rebecca, you rock big time. Thank you so much. You rock too. So we'll just keep rocking together, right? Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. It's almost 10 o'clock here in the night. And I, I right, guess. you're getting ready to go to bed. So yeah. thank right. you for your time. You're amazing. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I was, okay, so I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Phyllis and Nikki can vouch for this because I was super nervous about this interview because he is so talented, and I thought, I don't even know what to talk to this guy about because watching him play his guitar, I thought he's just, he is so up there that I'm like, I don't even know what I'm going to say. And then of course I'm such a jabber mouth and I'm glad he talked. I'm glad because this interview was all for him, all about him. So I'm glad he's the one that did all the talking because that's what these interviews are about. They are not about me. I'm just the one to, put them on here um, so you guys can enjoy them. I am here to ask them the questions. I am here to watch the chat room so I can tell them what you guys are saying, even I, though I didn't get to most of it. Um, Don, I am looking forward to an interview with you if you are still on here. <laughs> um, Amanda Foote, you too, dear. You too, because I heard every breath you take between you and Imran. So please get with me. We need to do an interview, girl. Girl, I've got you. So, um, but Imran, you are amazing. I am so glad we did this. And I, once we got started, I wasn't nervous. But he is just so talented. I thought, what in the world am I going to talk to him about? Um, so anyways, thank you guys for being here. I love doing these early interviews. They are actually a blast. So um, that's about all I have to say, but thank you guys. If you are an artist out there and you are interested in an interview, I am getting pretty booked. So make sure you get with me soon because I'm pretty much booked from now. And I do interviews on Mondays and Wednesdays. <clears throat> and then also on, um, if you're an inner, in, an international artist, let me get that out, um, then I will do Saturdays and Sundays just because of the
time differences. And so I am, so Mondays, Wednesdays, please get with me and let's set up a time for you to be interviewed. This goes for anybody that's involved in music. I am going to be interviewing a drummer soon. Um, I don't care if you're the tour bus driver. I don't care if you're, if you're involved in music, I love to have a good time. I love to laugh. I love to joke. My interviews are not the most, um, I'm not very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> um, I love, I love to have a good time. I'm not very professional. That's the word I'm looking for, but I love music. I have loved music since before I was even born because my mom went to school for music. My mom is a beautiful singer. Um, she also plays the ukulele. So I have grown up in a music family uh, with my mom being a singer and a whatever. So Christine, you and your car karaoke, yes. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, I just appreciate everybody being here so much today. A huge thank you to um, Phyllis for setting up this interview. Nikki, Monique, I know she's a huge Imran fan. Ricky Davis, you rock, brother. You rock. Um, but I love what I do. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to make this bigger and bigger. I don't know what else to, how to make it bigger. But if you guys have any, and would like to recommend something we, that we do different here, please don't feel sad to tell us because I have tough skin. If I'm doing something completely wrong, let me know. If you like what you see, let me know. <laughs> I am so honored and I'm so happy that Imran was so excited to be here with me today. So Imran, you're amazing. Thank you guys in the chat room for being here. Anyway, you guys are amazing. Um, and we look forward to the next interview. I will let you guys know. Probably I will do a live probably tomorrow. Um, I am so open-minded. I, I, music, there's not even a word for music. There, I know Brett. Brett tells me I should do a podcast. <laughs> so that's probably going to be in my future. So a podcast. Brett Collette, you guys, he is an amazing man, just saying. My friend Brett is one of the best guys you'll ever meet. So um, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> um, Christine, she's one of my best friends. She's in the chat room. Um, anyway, Rick, the, Ricky Davis, you need to get with me as well on an interview, my friend. Let's see, any other news? Don, don't forget to get a hold of me for an interview. Um, any, anyways, Imran, you are amazing. Thank you again for being on this wonderful, wonderful group that I get to say is mine. And I'm so honored that it's mine. And Christine's. Christine's the one that came up with the name. I do the interviews. Um, please, artists, also artists, listen up for a minute. Um, if you have any music, any gig news, any music videos, I want you guys to post them. And then between Christine and I and my son, Denver, he's also part of the admin on here. Um, please make sure you post them. Because it's hard for me to post all these thousands and thousands of amazing independent artists stuff. You know, it's like I get up and think, okay, who should I post today and who should I? So please, even if you're an, a fan and you know of a great music video or a great band that maybe I've never heard of, feel free to post. Because I know you guys are able to post. We just have to approve the posts before we'll post them. When I'm talking too much, my mouth is getting dry. But again, Imran, you are amazing. I just can't even say enough. And he was a, such a great interview. So much fun. Great sense of humor. Super talented. Um, anyways, you guys, thank you again for being part of my group. You guys have no idea how much I appreciate it. Um, love you all. 
And we'll see you Monday for another great interview. Love you guys. Happy Saturday. Bye-bye.